we have just completed uh, recording uh, for this week's uh, first Sunday in May service. And I wanted to take a moment to pause and tell you all a few things. One, um, I want to thank God for all of your prayers uh, for me uh, this last week since my car accident. Uh, it's been up and down, but I think that we're turning the corner. So I just want to thank you for your prayers. I also want to uh, share with you how thankful I am for the pastoral drive-bys that we did. Um, I haven't really said any thing about that um, in the last few days, but I wanted to take the opportunity now uh, as I've been reflecting on those afterward to tell you how much they meant to us, to the staff, uh, to myself, to Bricia, and to Pastor Joaquin. We loved being able to go see you. We loved being able to go visit you in your homes. And even though we had to socially distance, just being able to see your faces uh, was so comforting and brought so much joy to us. And I pray that it did the same for you. Um, the third thing I want to share is that today alone at El Muere Buen Samaritano, we were able to feed 470 people. Uh, this has been in partnership in the last week with Project Transformation, Highland Park United Methodist Church. And we want to give God thanks for that because His word is spreading and getting out. Um, people are, are coming to the church and receiving free lunch uh, on Thursdays. And we're going to continue to do this uh, through the rest of the spring and into the summer. And we're just so thankful for partnerships that continue to allow us uh, to be the body of Christ for the world. Thank each of you also for your support and your prayers uh, for the church and our ministry, knowing that we are the church. And so although we cannot gather to worship in the church building, you and I continue to be the church together at home. Thank you so much for continuing to keep Eves strong. You all are in my prayers and in my hearts, and I hope to see you soon. Until then, we'll continue to interact uh, online and virtually. And again, thank you so much for your love and prayers and support. Showers of love and blessings. God bless you this morning where we come together once again online to worship together in spirit and in truth from our homes and to give God thanks for this day and this week in which we know God has protected us and given us strength. So I invite you to pray with me this morning as we turn to God now and entrust this time in worship together unto him. Let us pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father and precious God, we give you so many thanks this morning for the gift of life and health and the opportunity now, Lord God, to worship together in spirit and in truth. And as we do so, Lord God, in each of our homes, we pray that your Holy Spirit would be with us, that your presence would be made known in a special way to each of our brothers and sisters and church family. Lord, we open our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to worship and praise you this morning and to receive your word this morning. Lord God, we pray for your blessings of continued health and protection and love and peace. And we pray, Lord God, that on today you would speak to us. We pray these things and we receive these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Samaritano, we have arrived this morning at our time of morning prayer, and I invite us now to go to God in prayer. Let us be prayerful for the prayer requests that we are all aware of as a congregation this week, as well as those that may remain unspoken but are in our hearts this morning. Let us pray. Dear Lord, light and peace unto us this morning. Thanks be to God. We praise and thank you, O oh God, for you are with us every day, every night, every moment of our lives. Through Christ, you created us, created the world, and through Christ, you preserve us. You continue to protect us, walk with us, and be with us. Lord God, we ask this day that you would provide for us through your word and through your worship and throughout this week in different ways, continued refreshment for our minds, our spirits, our hearts, our souls, and our bodies. We pray, Lord God, that you would grant us peace on this day and this evening and throughout this week. Through Christ and your Holy Spirit, we offer you all glory, honor, and worship. And in the same manner, we lift up our prayers this morning. Together we pray for the people of this congregation, for those who suffer and those in trouble. We pray for the concerns of this local community. We pray for the world, its peoples, and its leaders. We pray for the church universal, its leaders, its members, and its mission. We pray for our Elmwood El Buen Samaritano family. And this morning we join the communion of saints as we pray as our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me.
Buen Samaritano, our time of giving has arrived this morning. And I want to remind us that there are three ways that you can give to our church. The first way is by mailing your check to the church office at the church address or coming to drop it off in the safe and secure mail slot. The second way you can give is through our website, which is right here below, by going to the website and contributing through the contribute button. The final way that you can give to our church is by going to Tithely and putting in the church information, Omar de Buen Samaritano, and your personal information as well and the amount you would like to give. We thank you all so much for helping us keep Eves strong. <laughs>
here like a shepherd lead us. Greetings, Elmwood and Buen Samaritano. We are now gathered together to share the Word of God. Would you pray with me this morning? Lord God, as we come before you this morning to share in your Word, we ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts would be pleasing unto you. O oh Lord and our God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, church. It is a blessing to be sharing the Word of God this morning as I invite us to turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 1 through 10. And if you have your Bibles there at home, or if you have your Bible app on your phone, I invite you to read along with me, or to simply listen to the reading of the Word of the Lord. It reads in the following manner, the Gospel of John chapter 10, verse 1 through 10. I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the word of God. For the people of God, thanks be to God. This morning, church, we look at the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 1 through 10. And as we do that, we see a familiar image in Scripture that is the image of Jesus Christ as the Good Shepherd. And many of us are very familiar with that image and very familiar with this Scripture, as am I. Uh, this morning, as a matter of fact, our children uh, online are uh, studying and learning about what it means that Jesus is our Good Shepherd. And so they are doing that this morning, and it is always soothing to the heart and the soul to recall that Jesus is indeed the Good Shepherd, and that the Lord is our Shepherd, as we read in Psalm 23. 
This morning, although this powerful and beautiful image is found in the Gospel of John chapter 10 in the first six verses, I want to focus the next few minutes on the last four verses that we read, uh, verses uh, 7 through 10. Because in the moment that Jesus is speaking with his disciples and sharing this parable of the shepherd and his flock uh, with the disciples, we are told in verse 7 that uh, although Jesus is explaining uh, how uh, they are the sheep and how he is the good shepherd and he's uh, trying to teach them to listen to his voice just the way that sheep listen to the voice of their shepherd, they don't all together fully understand what it is that Jesus is sharing with them. And so in verse 7, Jesus yet again says to them, as we read in scripture, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. And Jesus presents a second image in the gospel of John chapter 10, verse 1 through 10. And this is the image that I want to focus on for the next few minutes. This image of Jesus Christ as the gate, as the gate. So in John chapter 10, we see a sheep, a sheep pen, we see the gate, and we see this image of Jesus Christ as the good shepherd. And then Jesus makes this shift from the good shepherd to explain to his disciples and to proclaim that he is the gate by which these sheep enter into the sheep's pen or enter into the fold, which is another word for a sheep pen, and very much so in this way, enter into the presence of God the Father. And so I want us this morning to imagine with me these images of a sheep's pen. So I want you to imagine with me a fence. I want you to imagine with me maybe a farm. That's kind of the way I've been imagining it this week. A farm and off to a distance. We have um, a farmhouse. We have the owner of the farm. We have uh, the boss man. We have the person who uh, is, the, is the head honcho at this uh, farm. And that would be God, this, this beautiful farmer that I can see off at a distance. And then we have, of course, the fence right that is keeping the sheep pen that is keeping the animals uh, in the farm particularly in this passage the sheep and then we have the gate by which scripture tells us that the sheep can move in and out in the version that we read another version and the spanish version earlier today uh, we read that it is in this sheep pen or it is through this gate rather and in this sheep pen but through the gate that the sheep can freely move about. And so we just read the sheep are going in and out through this gate. So I want you to imagine with me this gate. And after we have imagined this together, I want to share with you that this week I've had several conversations with many uh, of you and many members of our congregation that are ready to be back in church. A lot of us are ready to just be back to normal or be back into church. Several of us uh, in the last few weeks have had to find new rhythms, have had to find new routines, have had to find new ways to do things that we used to do every day or every week. And one of those things has been how we do church. And so rather than coming into the church building or the sanctuary, we have been doing church together for we are the church and we've been doing church or we've been congregating or we've been holding services online and so that's been the way that we've remained connected but for many of us we are missing our church home or our building but I want to share the good news this morning as I think about the next month because before Governor Abbott announced his announcement this last week that uh, some businesses and some uh, places would start to slowly open up here in the state of Texas. Uh, the week right before that announcement, we were in communication here in the North Texas Conference of the United Methodist Church with our bishop, Mike McKee. 
and all of the pastors of the North Texas Conference. And the bishop had made a decision that the churches, the United Methodist churches, in the North Texas Conference would not uh, reconvene worship in person, at least through the end of May. And so that's what we had been planning, and that's what we are still planning. There will be no in-person worship the rest of the month of May. But we are looking to see how things will be by the end of May. We are praying about that and looking for ways that we are going to begin to possibly open the church building up again, uh, possibly in June or sometime thereafter. And as I thought about this, and as I talked to several of you, as I've mentioned, and thinking about how we've not been able to come to our sanctuary, this passage was so encouraging and so soothing to my soul. And I'm going to share with you how and why. Because although we cannot come into the church building to congregate, although I am preaching to a camera and I am preaching in an empty sanctuary, and I acknowledge that, and we acknowledge that, and it's been different and it's been new and it's been difficult at times perhaps, Scripture tells us this morning that the way we access the Father the way that we come into relationship with God, the way that we access all that God the Father has to offer, grace and love and peace and protection and provision and hope and resilience and courage, all of those things we can access through Jesus Christ, who is the gate. Scripture doesn't tell us that the church building is the gate. It doesn't tell us that any other thing or person that we may have been putting our faith in or our trust in prior to COVID-19 and in the last few days is the gate by which we can come in to the Father's fold. But it is Jesus. It is Jesus who is the gate by which we come to the Father. And so that means that the good news this morning is that wherever we are in our homes, in our car, in our places of work, for those who are still working in these days, wherever we find ourselves, in whatever situation we find ourselves, we can access God's blessings, the blessings of the Father through Jesus Christ, who is always with us, who we can always pray to. That is why we pray in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is the reason we, play, we pray the Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, because we can access the Father through Jesus Christ that is the gate. We can access Jesus anytime, anywhere, and any place. I want you to imagine again with me the image of the fence and the gate and this farm and, and the sheep. Imagine us as the sheep. And I want us to be assured this morning, I pray that we are, that in the midst of the times that we're living in, the things that we can read on the news, the things that we can watch on the news, the things that we read online, the stories going on around us, that this morning we might be encouraged by this word and not allow fear or doubt or anxiety to consume our hearts or our spirits or our minds, but rather be encouraged that today we are protected by God the Father. And that this fence that we see in this image of Scripture is the very protection of God in our lives. And that this gate by which we can freely move in and out is Jesus Christ. We can freely move in and out of whatever situation, whatever moment we are going through. We can be free and we can move in and out. 
We can find faith in the midst of doubt. We can find hope in the midst of desperation. We can find light in the midst of darkness. We can find love in the midst of any discord. We can find these special places of God's blessings in and through our lives. For it is God's Spirit who is with us. This morning, there is a final verse in this scripture that we are all familiar with, I believe. And it is the final verse, verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Another version says that they may have life in abundance. And perhaps this week prior to COVID-19 during and in the coming few days, perhaps something or someone, perhaps the enemy himself has wanted to come in moments to come, steal, kill, and destroy our hope, our healing, our peace, our joy, our faith, our courage. But this morning, Scripture reminds us that it is Jesus Christ, this gate, our Good Shepherd, by whom we receive life and receive life in abundance through whom we can access these green pastures. Jesus, as he proclaims himself the gate in these verses, says it is through this gate that the sheep move in and out and find pastures. Find these still green pastures. And I pray that today and tomorrow and in the weeks to come, we continue to find those moments of green pastures, of calm pastures, that we continue to move in and out of the tension and into God's peace and hope and faith and love and grace. Church, to end this morning, you and I are the body of Christ. The last several weeks, we have affirmed that in so many ways. We miss our church building, and we cannot wait to be back. But we are the church. We are the body of Christ. And what that means for us in the next coming days, and even after this passes, what it means for us is that we are to be reminded that as the body of Christ, we are Jesus to the world for such a time as this. It is in our communion liturgy that we will partake of in just a few moments together, communion. And in our communion liturgy, we pray that we may be for the world, the body of Christ. And if that prayer is to be answered, then that means that we are the gate. You and I our gates. You and I are gates by which other people in need of the very same love and grace, provision and protection, encouragement, hope and grace that we are in need of may find that very same in Jesus Christ, in God in the Holy Spirit, through us. That we may be, for the world, the body of Christ. The way that our neighbor, the way that our family member, the way that a stranger comes to know and meet the God of love and grace. You and I are the gate this morning. Church, as we move forward from this place, we are reminded that on one occasion, Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers. Jesus referring to anyone who had come to try to show the way to Christ before Jesus. The Gospel of John is the very same place where Jesus later on says, I am the way, 
the truth, and the life. Jesus is establishing himself as the way, the truth, and the life, the way to access God. And so he says here, all whoever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. We will be saved from our moment of doubt, from our moment of fear, from our desperation, from our sadness, our loneliness, whatever may come our way at any given time. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out through this gate and find pasture. This week, may we find this pasture. May we move freely in and out of God's love and grace and hope, mercy and goodness. And may we be saved. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning, we invite you to celebrate communion by taking the prepackaged communion that we dropped off during our pastoral care drive-bys. If you have saved that, you may use that this morning, or you may find elements in your home uh, to celebrate today. That could be water, it could be grape juice, any kind of juice that you may have at home. It can be a bread slice or a cracker or a wafer, whatever you may have at home. But if you do have your communion uh, cup and wafer, your prepackaged communion that we dropped off, uh, we'd like to invite you to use that as we celebrate the great Thanksgiving this morning. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And taking your elements at home, you may simply say, God, bless this bread, which is your body. God, bless this cup, which is your blood. Amen. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on those of us gathered in our homes in spirit and truth and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, 
until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Our time has come to be dismissed from our worship time together, but not ever from God's presence. And so this morning, I invite you to pray with me as we are dismissed from our time together and as we receive God's blessings upon each one of us and upon the rest of our week. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father and precious God, as we come before you this morning, we thank you for this precious hour of worship and praise and the sharing of your word. And as we move forward from our time of worship, we ask that your blessings of continued peace and protection and provision and health, your continued blessings of comfort and peace, your grace, your love, and your favor would continue to be upon each of us in our families. Lord God, I send out blessings to each of our own Wede Buen Samaritano family this morning. And we receive these blessings in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.